Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the main differences of trading futures contracts versus trading stocks and equities. So I put a little slide together here uh, about the main differences. First and foremost is of the thousand stocks that are out there, thousands of them, we don't need to use necessarily scanners to go and find the hot stock of the day and find out what's moving, especially on the low flow, low cap stocks. Um, we're playing breakouts and such and, and, and runners looking off of a catalyst or looking for some type of momentum. Uh, we can come to the market each day with futures and, and trade the same ones. And by doing that, you get to learn their personality. I'll give you an example. The main two we'll be speaking about here are the NQ and the ES. The NQ follows the top 100 stocks of the NASDAQ. So it's a little more bouncy, has a little whippy, some wicks on there, a lot of volatility. The ES, on the other hand, follows the top 500 stocks of the S&P 500. So it's a thicker market. It's going to move a little bit slower. It has a little more ranging to it. Now, they move very similarly because the top stocks, the Facebooks, the uh, Amazons, the Googles, um, the you know Netflix, NVIDIA at the time with the fangs, right, were uh, – they, they have the – much higher weight, so they're able to move the market. So you get a couple of those tech stocks pushing up quickly, uh, it's going to pull the market up with them. But for the most part, the ES and the NASDAQ, they, they will tend to follow each other, just NASDAQ being a little more bouncy, ES being a little more fluid. Something to take into consideration when you're looking. <clears throat> Another good thing with the futures markets, you don't need, necessarily need to have a large account. Introduced are these micro futures. Okay, so look at the scale on the right hand side. This is an older scale um, for the ES. It's it's currently at this point in time is is trading around 3600. So this scale is 2800, and then if we look here is 2801. That is a full point. Each one of these 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75 are ticks within that point. So there are there are four steps within it. The ES trades at fifty dollars a point. That's how much you make or lose. If it goes up a point and you're in with one contract, it's $50 win. If it goes against you, it's $50 loss. So that would make each tick $12.50. This is US dollars. The NQ, uh, on the other hand, is $20 per point. And currently the scale, I believe, is around 12000 is where the NASDAQ, where the NQ is at this point in time. So, But it moves the same way. You would have uh, four ticks in between each one of the points. And $20 a point, $5 a tick, if you do the math on that. The micros are simply one-tenth. $50 a point here, $5 a point here. $20 here, $2, and then so on with, with the ticks in between. This is really good because you don't need a large account. And as a matter of fact, you can you can trade um, several brokers out there allow you to trade. You put $250 in, and when you buy one contract of, let's say, the MES or the MNQ, it's, it's $50, okay? It's going to hold $50 from that account. So you can trade a couple of contracts of micros, and you can do pretty well with that. So we don't need, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in an account to be able to trade futures. Um, <clears throat> that this also brings me to the point of this here, the, the PDT rule, which is a, uh, in the U.S. is a pattern day trading rule. That rule is if you don't have an account with $25,000 minimum balance, then you're only allowed four trades in a rolling five-day period. Now, that is not good for someone that may be scalping or taking two or three trades a day because after a day or two or two days, you're you're, you're done. You can't trade for the rest of the week. That does not apply with, with futures. We're not trading the underlying assets. We are trading the indices. So, again, it no longer applies. Um, futures contracts, you don't need to worry about getting filled or not. It's You can go both directions, long or short. There's no additional costs on it. Uh, and there is the liquidity is there. I have never had a problem getting filled. Yes, you may have some slippage if you're going in a fast moving market with market orders, but generally the, the, the spreads are very, very, very small. And you're only talking generally a tick or two. Here is 0.5, uh, uh, the spread of the last ES that was traded. That was the end of the day um, on that particular day. Um, trading fees, very, very, very low cost. Uh, the broker that I'm using, the trades are 19 cents per side each direction. So you're talking less than 40 cents per per the trade. And then there are a couple of additional fees on top of that. But it's it's generally around a dollar to make the trade per side. So under two dollars, which is really good. Trading stocks was uh, was was quite a bit different. But that's another benefit. 
Um, long or short, as I said, without additional fees, we travel with uh, uh, the levels are based over here in points versus in currencies. So let's say you're trading one stock and it's not really the mover of the day and that stock happened to be $9.37 a share and you have your account and you know how much money is there and how many shares you can trade with that. But that stock is not moving. So you look at another stock and that's trading at $13.37 a share. That one's not moving. You look at another one, it's $3.47 a share. You just have to do all that math really quickly. With futures, it's the, it's it's a point-based system. So you just know, all right, I'm in ES. It goes up a point, that's $50 on one contract. If you want to double your account and trade faster, simply add two contracts. Instead of $50 a point, it's doubled, $100 a point. And the NQ would be $20 and 40, 60, 80, and so on. Um, uh, lastly, you're not going to find any pump and dump schemes on the futures. It is a global market, and it, it's not like everybody rushes to the U.S. Open at 9.30 Eastern Time, uh, New York Time, and, and tries to get the runner of the day. The futures markets trade 23 hours a day, five days per week, and they're broken up into sessions. Uh, I was going to say they're broken up. They're, they're not intentionally broken up into sessions, but we can look at them as sessions. And I'm going to take one quick second and show you exactly what that looks like here. This is the futures market for the ES, and this was on, as you can see here, November 25th of 2020. 6 p.m. Eastern time is when the market opens, and this is the Asian market open. The first hour or two is the pre-market, and as we can see, it starts to pick up speed. The candles get a little bit bigger, um, and it trades through the, through the night. This here is 3, 3 a.m. Eastern time. The Asian market does not stop at that point. It actually has a little bit of a crossover, but this is when the European market comes online, 3 a.m. Eastern, which is uh, 8 a.m. in London. Uh, in, in that trades, as you can see, we have a little bit larger movement with these candles. They're making, these aren't so big. These are a little bit longer candles. Now, this here is 9.30 a.m. The European market still crosses over and it's gonna continue to trade and have a blend area. But when the US market opens, that's a whole different animal, but I have this little um, uh, shading area just to show you the differences between the markets. I'm going to turn volume on, and we can see what the difference looks like. As we can see here, the volume for the Asian market is not really that great. You won't have problems getting filled. There's just not a lot of volume on this. A lot of volume increases, and as you can see right here in the U.S. market, pre-market, it starts to increase even more, and then of course with the market open, we get that craziness. And it's very interesting that if you take the first first 45 minutes or half between half hour and an hour of the U.S. market, it has more volume than the entire evening put together. So you can see why that might be something you may want to look at by trading the, uh, the beginning if you're into that type of fast-moving markets and um, playing these breaks like this. So anyway, you can pick and choose the markets. They move a little differently. This is the ES, as I said. We're looking at a 10-minute chart right here. Uh, so you have a lot of time to choose from. It's not just set at one, at one day. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm hoping that will give you a, a little better idea at uh, some of the main differences between stocks and futures. But if you look at the chart, they pretty much... It's still a chart. We still have the candles. We still have support and resistance. There's still you know, higher highs and lower lows. You can see a trend is following down here. Um, we can see uh, price action if you're a price action trader, and we can see breakout areas if we wish to play those as well. So uh, take a look at them. Take a look at the futures markets. Uh, there are futures only brokers that are out there, but maybe your broker has this uh, available to you already. Uh, keep your risk managed, and good luck.